Welcome to part 3 of the Spherical Mask Shader Tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we've been writing out the core of our shader. In this part we will add emission, and I'm going to add some post-processing along with the emission. Maybe I can talk about post-processing shaders in another tutorial, but for now we'll use the post-processing stack from the asset store. Let's first make our scene window look a bit more attractive. I have no clue why Unity is always starting with this ugly skybox, and I just want to remove it. So let's go over to Window, go to Lighting, Settings. Then here at the Skybox material, we will go and select the Frame Debugger. Now go to the Directional Light and make sure that the light is set to white. Now I would like to be able to increase the contrast between the grayscale and the color, so I will add a new property in the shader to increase the color strength. The same technique we will use for the emission. So in the shader, in the properties, I will add a new property and I'll place it underneath the main text. And we'll call this property color strength. Open parentheses and we'll give it the name of color strength. Now this is going to be a range between 1 and 4 for now. And by default it's going to be 1. Now as we've done before, we also have to add our variable into the CG program. So let's go underneath here and create here a half and we'll call this color strength. Now that we can use the color strength in our shader, let's scroll down. And here we've got the color and it's multiplied by color, but the grayscale is inherited from the color. So we won't add the multiplication of the color strength here we'll put it inside the lerp. So add the color to where it's going to lerp, we're going to multiply this by the color strength. Now let's save the script and go back to Unity. Now there we can see our color strength and we can increase it to increase the contrast. Now that we've got the color strength set up, let's add the emission to the shader. And for the emission we also need a color, a main text and a color strength. So let's copy and paste this and we'll just change the names towards the emission. So we'll call this emission color, emission color. We'll call the main text the emission text, emission, and the color strength we'll name the emission strength. Now, of course, we also need all of these variables in the CG program. So we've got here the sampler 2D and we can just type a comma here and we'll add here the emission text. Now at the color we can type here the emission color and we we'll also need the strength so let's type the emission strength. Now you'll notice that in the struct input it requests the UV of the main text and we need the UVs of our emission map. So let's type a flow 2 and we want to request the UVs coordinates of the emission text. And in shader language if you type UV in front of the name of your texture then it will request the texture coordinates. Now we can use all of our properties in the shader. So let's scroll down and we're going to create a fixed 4 just as we did with the color and we'll call this E for emission and it's going to be a texture 2D. We want to use the emission text and we want to use the in.uv emission text. We want to multiply this by the emission color. And in this case, we can just multiply this by the emission strength. Now, just as we created a lerp for the color, we'll also create a lerp for the emission. So let's type here a fixed four, and we'll call this the lerp emission. And it's going to be a lerp, and we'll lerp from a fixed four, zero, 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 zero. And we're going to lerp towards E by sum. Now we just need to apply this lerp to the emission output, so we can create 
O dot emission and it's going to be lerp emission dot RGB. Now let's save the script and go back to Unity. Now you'll notice that the emission is placed everywhere, but we still require here an emission map, so we're going to create one. So I've opened up the texture in Photoshop and we just want to create for the emission map a black and white picture where white will be emission and black will be no emission. And the way I created this was go to image mode, go to grayscale and then I just go back to color again. Uh, I'm going to increase the contrast and the next thing I'm doing is go to levels and I'm just going to increase these and save this image back to Unity. Now back in Unity we can select the emission slot I created but first I'm going to set the tiling of the emission at the same tiling as the albedo. So this will be 4 and this will be 4 as well. Now select the emission map and you get only the emission at those points. And if we change the color of the emission, the emission color will change as well. Now when I work with emission maps, I like to add a post-processing bloom effect. So we're going to go to the asset store and we're going to import the post-processing stack. Now let's add a new profile of the post-processing. We'll call this just profile. Go to the main camera and add the post-processing behavior and place the profile in the behavior. Now I kind of messed up in this tutorial as I've set the skybox to the frame debugger but you should never do that. Just put it to none and set the clear flex to solid color instead of skybox and I just selected black here. We get the same result and it works. Now go to the post processing profile and I'll select the bloom and we'll do some color grading and we put the contrast a little bit higher. Now if we go to the material we can for example set the color a little bit lower so we get even more contrast and if we set and if we then set the emission strength a little bit higher we get a nice glowy feeling here. So that's it for this part. In the next part we will create a script in C sharp that will change the shader position in the update function. If you want to support me in making these tutorials available for everyone, become a patron on my Patreon and you get access to all the source files of my tutorials. If you like this tutorial, please hit the thumbs up and if you want to stay updated with new tutorials, subscribe to the channel.